Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. So this week, I think Speaker Pelosi did something pretty remarkable. Uh, I, uh, As I said, I, to get every Democrat on board to move forward with that $3.5 trillion investment bill and to get every Democrat on board uh, who voted for the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, uh, at a time when everyone was saying, no, this was all going to fall apart. Uh, you had the the unmovable nine or ten or whatever that was who had the little spasm that the media wanted to make a big deal out of. Everybody was on board. And and look, I've always said Democrats are like herding cats. Uh, she figured it out. Uh, and uh, look, we're one step closer to getting that investment bill. We're one step closer uh, to getting to vote for our representatives, to pick who represents us, not them to pick us and here to share some thoughts on well if it was a big deal or not i've asked david pepper to come talk with us uh david is the former chairman of the ohio democratic party david thanks for taking time for us thanks good to be back with you so is this a big deal is it a big deal that she got every democrat on board um since it is a democratic priority is this still a big deal it is a big deal you know i, I there were clearly a few that were going a little bit uh crosswise and I, I i've seen this before uh we've all seen it she really in the end uh whatever she does uh, behind the scenes really gets her folks in line and i, I i'm glad you know it, we are watching uh, the other side just be you know today half of them are calling on biden to resign or impeach you know we cannot afford to splinter we've got to get some big things done in the next year if we're going to have a chance of making a case for democrats being in charge in 22 and, you know, I, I know people have their own individual things. They care about it. But it, it, if if we had had a few Democrats screw that whole thing up, it would have been very damaging to Biden, to the House Democrats generally, uh, to the Senate. And so I'm really glad she got duck, the ducks in line. And, and uh, you know, I, I just hope that people figure out the big picture here, yeah. which is far bigger uh, than, than I think some uh, clearly seem to understand. Yeah, before we move along, I, I, I got to back up a little bit because, you know, it's, been, it's my view that the people who today are taking shots at Biden and almost gleeful over the death of 13 soldiers and the injuring of another 18, I find it disgraceful, I find it disgusting, and wholly unpatriotic and un-American. It's, it's horrible. And that's, that's, what I, that's why I said it this way. I mean, first of all, obviously, just horrible news today. You can see Biden himself and, and all he's dealt with uh, uh, really, you know, really devastated by it, as we all were. And to see within hours, you know, every Republican Senate candidate in Ohio calling for impeachment, resignation. I mean, I, I look back to past events where we've always rallied. I mean, these were terrorists that attacked Americans. And the idea that some Americans' first response is to go after our president it, that's their that's their their and their instinct. It's just sick. I mean, we all remember after nine eleven, you know, we rallied. Uh, that's what we do. That's what we've always done. And and you know, whether it's Jim Jordan or a bunch of Senate candidates, I mean, it's it's just horrible to watch. And I I don't want to thank them because it's what you should do. But I did appreciate there were a lot of Ohio Republicans today who did make statements that had that didn't mention Biden. They mentioned the troops and the sacrifice. And the courage and, you know, whether it was Rob Portman doing that or some of the Congress people, uh, you know, it's not something to thank them for because that's what you should do. But I appreciated that they did not go down this path of some of the real, you know, crazy right wingers who who literally were, were stomping on the graves of these soldiers to make it into politics. Awful, yeah, and, and I would awful. argue that, you know, those are the people who uh, were behind a lot of what happened on January 6th and and our yeah. domestic terrorists. Uh, I, yeah, I believe well, a lot of them were the same the same voices, but I just wanted to get to that uh, before yeah, we. No, I agree with you totally. We moved along because look, I I think getting uh, that that John Lewis voting uh, Voting Rights Act moving forward is a is a good thing. It's a big thing. Uh, the Senate is going to have to do something on the filibuster to get it through yeah. because we desperately need it. And I know it's a cliche. Yeah. It's been said a million times. But at the end of the day, voters are supposed to uh, elect their representatives, not uh, not representatives pick their voters. And right, right. now, the way things are rigged, uh, it seems completely backwards. And in your state, uh, the gerrymandering is probably going to hit. So first, I want to I want to get your thoughts on the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. And then I want to get into the, the gerrymandering that's happening in your state. Yeah, it's desperately needed. I mean, what we're seeing around the country is is just, you know, 11, 2011 was terrible. They gerrymandered for a decade. They started suppressing the whole Obama coalition for a decade, really made it hard to win in states like Ohio. They're doing it now on steroids. And, you know, the history of this country is when states are attacking voting rights 
unless the federal government steps up, they succeed. You know, there was a line a couple of months ago, well, we'll just organize around that. You don't, or you can't out organize gerrymandering. You can't out organize the worst of suppression and you shouldn't have to, you know, you shouldn't have to. The federal government is here to step up and, and protect when states attack. And, you know, there are many exceptions to the filibuster, hundreds of them. As Stacey Abrams said, you know, repeatedly, the idea that if we're going to make exceptions for all sorts of other things for the filibuster, I think protecting voting rights against states that attack them qualifies as another reason, as, as one other place where you need an exception to the filibuster. There, there isn't any good argument, common sense, rational governance argument that justifies requiring the Democrats. You know, there are two teams here. One team is attacking voting rights in almost every state in the country. The other is trying to protect voting rights. The attackers are doing it every single day. They don't care about minority votes in the states where they're attacking. They don't sit around and wait for Democrats in Ohio to say, oh, I'm okay with that attack. So the idea that you would that you would allow that to happen at the state level, but at the federal level, somehow the Democrats have defined 10 Republicans who are on the side of those attacking to join them. Talk about, you know, what's what uh, you know, asymmetric warfare. It, it's absurd. And I I mean, I I'm I respect the, the Democrats on, on the Senate, but there should not be one Democrat who says the filibuster should get in the way of this stuff. We're being played for fools if we let that happen. No, I agree with you. And look, I'm I'm a believer in getting rid of the filibuster. And if it's something that needs to be filibustered, uh, you take to the floor and you you hold the floor. Nothing else gets done. Absolutely. Uh, and then you explain to me why you're against whatever's moving forward. And if it's right. that big of a deal, uh, then nothing gets done until till we yeah. figure it out. This idea that you can filibuster something and, and nobody knows who did it is insane. It's ridiculous. I mean, I, you look at the Texas Democrats who left the state. I mean, this is this is not normal politics. The attacks on voting rights, the attacks on the process of counting ballots and who counts them that we are seeing in Georgia and other states, it's all so over the top, so illegitimate that we can't act like it's sort of normal politics. And that's why, yeah, to say, yeah, we'll just let the filibuster run like it would on any other issue. No, no, this is different. I mean, whatever you think of it on other issues, this is an attack at the core of these states. It will deter, it, it will basically rig the next decade of elections the, between the gerrymandering and the suppression. And uh, it, I just, the, the Texas Democrats getting out of Texas, you know, as, so, as a friend of mine says, if your hair's on fire, sometimes you got to act like your hair's on fire. You can't act normal right. if something's really bad. And those Texas Democrats said, this is really bad. And too often I watch the Senate, it's, they're against it, but are they really fighting? Are they doing what they just did to get that infrastructure bill passed? I don't see it yet. They need to fight a lot harder. And of course the filibuster, you know, should not get in the way. And like you said, if it's going to, you make them really do it. You know, I want to see Chuck Grassley on the floor at 4 a.m. arguing for it. I don't want to make this easy. Nope. This is not normal politics. No, I'm right there with you. But now I'm looking at your state and you recently testified against what the Republicans in Ohio are, are going to do. Uh, and, and as I understand, they're basically holding back the, the, the big plan. Um, walk us through what it looks like. What what is going on when they uh, when they draw these maps up and, and and how this this goes, how this goes through the process. Well, we saw it 10 years ago, and, and we, we uh, thanks to the League of Women Voters and some other groups, we got all their documents from 2011 after the fact. And, and they, they rented a private hotel room that they called the bunker. They temporarily laid off state house staff, rehired them as private contractors. The schedule that they formally wrote down literally said, hold the map, quote, in the can until the last minute. And they're doing it again right now. Basically the same leaders, the same staff. We have five days to go before a deadline of a map. There's no map. They're running around doing public hearings. Half of them don't show up. You know, Mike DeWine, the governor, he was at a Bengals practice. I'm a Bengals fan, so I don't mind that in, in one way. But he was at a Bengals practice one day, missing a bunch of the meetings. And then the next day, the meeting was in Cincinnati, wasn't there. These are the public hearings. And everyone was, it's terrible he's not at the public hearings. And what I said in my testimony was, well, that's because that's not where this is happening. They're at the meetings where it's happening. Right. And they're all in private. They're all in secret. They're literally, again, their plans say, put it on a private computer. Keep, make sure you have the key to the room. Like 
it's all being done in secret and it's absurd. And frankly, you know, the, some of these guys, literally like the state auditor, he's on this commission. It's a seven member of commission, five Republicans, two Democrats based on election results. Um, but the state auditor of Ohio has literally suggested that council members be tried as criminals when they violate the sunshine law. Okay. This is the most public act you can take. I think the sunshine law should apply to every aspect of it. And they're doing it all in secret. Same people who are, who are grandstanding against local members who screw up on the sunshine law. So these guys are hiding it all. And my fear is it's going to come out with a day to go, like 10 years ago, there'll be no time they'll ram it through. But here's the one good news. Activists in this state twice passed gerrymandering reform constitutional amendments that unlike 10 years ago, give us some protection. If they do what I'm afraid they're going to do, there is a lawsuit that can be won. And the other big thing Ohio accomplished the last two elections, even when we were red, we won three out of four Supreme Court races. So like Pennsylvania, we actually have a pretty fair court. The chief justice is a Republican, but she's pretty independent. She voted against the last gerrymander. Now we have three Democratic endorsed justices too. So as ugly as it's been, I think if these guys roll the dice, and that seems to be their, their instinct on everything these days, but I think they take a great risk that unlike 10 years ago, there's new strict language about not being too partisan. And there's a court that actually is independent enough that I think it'll strike down any nonsense. That's our hope, at least. Right. So if they do strike that down, does the court then draw the maps or they just say, go back and, and do it again and rejigger it however you can? I think it'll be one of the, you know, it's, we've never been there before. So I think you'll see a back and forth. But I think overall, I think the Republicans take a real risk. You know, the, we're going to have 15 congressional districts. They would love to have it be 13 Republicans, two Democrats, even though for the last 10 years, it's been a 55-45 split in voting. I mean, Democrats should have seven seats. In a good year, we should win eight. In a bad year, five or six. They want to go for 13-2 or 12-3, and I think that would get laughed out of court. I don't think that would survive. They get a little higher, it gets closer. But um, I think that if I were a Republican lawyer, I'd be saying to them, guys, you don't want to you roll the dice, you may get stuck with six or seven seats by a court. Right. Don't be absurd. You know, Cincinnati, we have some of the, it's, it's everywhere, but Cincinnati where I live split right down the middle to split all those voters up, create two Republican districts. Marcy Captor and up in Lake Erie, literally there are parts, it's called the snake on the lake from Toledo to Cleveland. There's parts of that district that are impassable except with snorkel gear on. I mean, it's, it's literally so close to the lake, there's no road. Jim Jordan's district, complete joke, from from near Dayton all the way to Cleveland and, and Oberlin. So if they try and preserve these wild districts to create like a 12-3 map, I think it will get struck down. But the first thing is the secrecy is just so absurd. And, and that's what I testified on because honestly, like I've seen these Republicans be self-righteous over and over again about open meetings and attacking others that don't do it. And as I said at this hearing, this is the most public matter there is. And you guys have some computer in some back room run by some private contractor doing all the work. And how do we know that? It's what they did 10 years ago. And we've seen the training manuals. It's what they're told to do by sure. the RNC. No, no, it it's is. Outrageous. And this is where you go, I don't even know why this is in their hands. I don't know why an elected official is anywhere near drawing those maps. I, yeah. I, I honestly don't. Uh, I, this And by the way, this is where the... Um, the For the People Act is so important. The, the Not the John Lewis one. The way to fix this, it, it, because right now you're going to have Democratic states think Republican states will gerrymander, so Democrats are going to, like, it's a total mess. The, the federal government could establish a baseline of independent commissions everywhere. So we're out of this corrupt process of politicians rigging for themselves. But until there's some broader federal approach, you know, Democrats, again, you're you're sort of going in asymmetrical warfare if you play the good guy on gerrymandering while Ohio goes 13-2. But yeah, you're, you're completely right. If you put 10 members of the League of Women vote, or frankly, if you took 10 college kids and gave them a computer and said, draw fair maps that accomplish certain goals of compactness and fairness, they would get it right. Yep. The reason these maps are so bad is because the politicians have only the wrong motives 
the average citizen, not even that political, would actually figure it out easily. The computers would do all the work. The problem is their goals are very different from what the average citizen wants to see happen. You know, both of our gerrymandering reform efforts pass more than 70-30. People are tired of the corrupt system of rigged districts. You know, they 99% of the election results in Ohio for the last decade, you and I could have seen in 2011. What's the whole point of the elections if we knew what 99% of them would be? And that's exactly what happened. And that's what they'll do again if they can get away with it. And this is this is why you don't get the kind of voter participation that you no. should have. Because if the, if it's already rigged before you, totally. you cast the first ballot, you know, what some people I've had people tell me this. What's the point? We already know. Right. Uh, it's sad. And stuff. that's why you also have legislatures like Ohio. We just hit 5000 COVID cases today. 4000 yesterday. School just started. What was their hearing on two days ago? Getting rid of all vaccines. That's what they're talking about. Why? Because they're all in little right-wing gerrymandered districts where they're worried they're going to get primaried by someone else who's even more anti-vax than they are. I mean, it. you know, most people in this state, in Ohio and in the country, 70% support masks in schools. These, these are, they are on the far, you know, fringe edge legislating this stuff. And, and one, I, they believe it, but two, it's because they're living in a world where the people who win are these extremists versus sort of everyday common sense people. No, you're spot on, which is why we've got to fight back. And I'm I'm glad you testified. Um, as this comes down, I'd love to have you come back and share some thoughts on it. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. I, I, I think that here and everywhere, I feel like people are really in a lull right now. Like, you know, we, we know there's some tough things going on. COVID's coming back. The Afghanistan stuff is is horrible. But man, they will get this done if we don't fight as hard as we need to. Yep. Uh, that's why I showed up the other day a little pissed off. As you because should be. if we don't show some fire, if we don't go to court, if we don't pack these hearings, they will do what I saw it 10 years ago. You remember when they, 10 years ago, they did it right in the middle of the Senate Bill 5 fight. So we're fighting over saving, you know, collective bargaining. They rigged it at the same time. Yeah. No. no one even showed up. So you. we've got to keep our, our eye on this. There you go. David, I appreciate the time. Thanks so much. David Pepper, f- former chairman of the Ohio Democratic Party. Let's take a quick break. Right back. Stick around. You're listening to The Rick Smith Show. Remembering that united we bargain, divided we beg. Rick Smith.